During Bill Dahlberg's tenure as chairman and chief executive officer, he has transformed Southern Company from a southeastern regional utility into one of the largest producers of electricity in the world, serving millions of customers in 10 countries on four continents every day. Like the man himself, Bill's roots are modest and humble. We moved out to what I thought was the country when I was five years old, I guess. My dad, he was an accountant by trade, but wanted to be a farmer, so we moved out to Stone Mountain to, to uh, build a farm. We had kerosene, lights. I still remember the day back in 1947, I guess it was, when Georgia Power came down the road and installed a pole and ran the wires to our new house, and we had electricity for the first time in that house, and uh, boy, what a great day that was. And I worked at Sears at night for a while and went to school in the daytime. Then I ended up going to work for uh, Georgia Power Company and moved to the night school. And I got some encouragement along the way. I tell the story about a mentor of mine who, who forced me to go back. I worked for him at the time. Uh, and he explained it to me. I had dropped out and he had called me in his office and uh, told me that he was going to school at night and that he was going to finish. He was driving all the way to, to Georgia. And he said, if he could drive 60 miles, my gosh, I could get in my car and go six miles down to Georgia State. I thought that was a pretty strong message. Then he made it even stronger. He said, uh, besides that, if you don't do it, I'm going to fire your ass. <laughs> uh, I started at Georgia State in uh, January of 1959, and I, f I found my uh, senior ring. I guess they call it a senior ring. It says 1970 on the side. <laughs> That's a lot of years. Uh, Washing meter covers, that's how Bill began his illustrious career in the electricity business. He wore many hats and rose quickly through the ranks. I've been proud to be associated with you. At one time, I was, had some responsibilities in marketing here. That lasted six months. Then I went to the service company, and I had some responsibilities for marketing there. That lasted five months. Somebody said it doesn't take long to learn marketing. <laughs> I don't agree with that. I consider that I still work as part of marketing, and I want to make sure that I'm doing my job to help you. Today, he quarterbacks the entire Southern Company team, all 30,000 of them, in his own unique way. I've got the hat. I got the sweatshirt, they even gave me a whistle, but there's one more part of the equation, and that's you. If I could do one thing right now, it would be to take off this captain's hat and put it on you, because you are really the people in charge of this effort. Thanks very much. Good sailing to all of you. He loves to have fun. He loves his wife, Jill. He loves his family. And he loves his motorcycle. When I think about being a citizen wherever we serve, and in the original context, Mr. Arkwright was talking about as we move lines into a community, we would be more than just the supplier of electricity. He said that we were there to stay. We'd be a permanent part of the community and its development. That is no different than our role today. 
as we take a role in a community, it's an active role, and the active role is to help communities develop their own potential. I mean, that makes some good business sense for us. But I think our people take it as more of a commitment than that. I think they take it as a commitment that I'm going to be a part of helping the place where I live and work and raise my children reach its full potential. Leading by example. It's one of the points of Bill's Southern style of doing business, which guides the company's operations around the world and in its own backyard. I have strong feelings about uh, the city itself, and when you think about the city, too many of us think about uh, the suburbs, they think about outside the perimeter, and many of us live there. Uh, I guess that was Maynard Jackson I heard talk about Atlanta being like an apple, and that if you let the core of the apple die, the whole will die. And I've been to other American cities where I have seen that happen when the center of the city decays and it's not something I want to see. There is that same potential here. In fact, Atlanta is one of the poorest cities if you go inside the city limits in the country. Uh, it needs revitalization. It needs the, uh, uh, the interjection of new capital. Who knows what the next hundred years holds for us? But as I scan the horizon of time, looking to the past and to the future, I see that even as things change, some things remain the same. We've changed a lot through the years, but our character has remained the same. We're going to survive because we're fit to survive. And not only are we going to survive, but we're going to prosper. And in that process, we'll help Georgia and all the people we serve. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we will continue to be a citizen wherever we serve. Ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of the 1999 Freedom Award, Mr. Bill Dahlberg.